Welcome to the ultimate five day South Dakota road trip. From the rugged beauty of the Badlands to the majestic carved faces of Mount Rushmore, this journey is packed with jaw dropping landscapes, fascinating history, and epic roadside attractions. Believe me when I say that South Dakota is a true hidden gem that you have to explore. Let's jump into our road trip across the state. We made it to South Dakota. Great faces and great places. <laughs> After entering South Dakota from Wyoming, we stopped for a picture at the state line and then continued to our first stop in Spearfish. We drove through the town to the DC Booth Historic Fish Hatchery, which is one of the oldest fish hatcheries in the United States with over a hundred years of history. There's a lot of fish in there right now. Be sure to check the hours for when it's open, but there was a lot going on on the day we visited. The fish hatchery really is impressive as it spawns and releases 20 to 30,000 rainbow trout every year. That's gotta be 26 inches. That's huge. We spent some time exploring the property, including going underwater to see the fish up close. This is a cool spot because they used to transport fish via rail car, and so this is one of the replicas of the cars they used. Fish car number three is the main reason I wanted to stop as it's a reproduction of the refrigerated tanker cars that they used to use to transport fish. These cars were used for over 60 years and brought fish all throughout the Black Hills of South Dakota. It's pretty awesome that they have this replica one here and there was a docent who walked us through the entire process of transporting the fish. So this is an awesome spot for families on the weekends. There's tons of stuff for kids to do here. You can feed the fish. They even had little activities, very fun. Heading on to Spearfish Canyon. The plan for the day was to make it to Deadwood, but instead of taking a 30 minute drive down the highway to the city, we decided to take the long way around and go through Spearfish Canyon. I've always heard this is one of the best drives in the state, so I didn't want to miss it, and they have a lot of waterfalls, so you know I can't say no to those. Made it to our first stop, Bridal Vale Falls. To access this 60 foot waterfall, you just park on the side of the road and you walk right across to the viewpoint. It looked like there may have been a way to hike up to it if you wanted to cross the water, but we didn't do it on this trip. If you decide to drive through the canyon, be sure to give yourself a lot of time as this is one of those places where the journey is the destination and it's incredibly beautiful. Next up, we got a half mile hike to Spearfish Falls. About 30 minutes into the canyon, you'll reach one of the main destinations where there's a couple lodges and a few waterfalls. First up for us was the hike to Spearfish Falls, which is about a mile round trip. I found a Sasquatch on the trail. <laughs> this is a beautiful trail that's easy except for a little elevation at the beginning and crosses over the creek multiple times. The sign at the top said that it was a mile and a half round trip and we've been hiking for about five minutes and we're just now reaching the waterfall so I don't think it's that much. When you reach the viewing platform for this 47 foot waterfall hopefully you're as blown away as we were at how beautiful it is. The way it comes over the mountain and splits into multiple cascades is impressive to see and was an early highlight on our South Dakota road trip. Well done South Dakota, you're starting off pretty strong. One more waterfall and then we're heading to Deadwood. On the way back we decided to walk over to the upper viewpoint as well. Was it worth it going up to the upper one? Not too much. Not really. It's, it gives a good feel for the hike though, it's pretty high. It is pretty high. So we just finished up this waterfall and we're gonna go to Rough Lock. You can either hike to it, it's about two miles, you start there, or you can actually drive all the way out and then just walk down to it. We're gonna do that today because we are heading on after that. I have to imagine it's a beautiful hike if you have the time as it basically follows Little Spearfish Creek the entire way. The drive is unpaved, but we had no problem doing it in a two wheel drive car and there was a decent amount of parking at the end. The trail to the observation point follows the creek again and it's about a half mile round trip. The first spot you'll get to is the Upper Falls observation area that looks down on the waterfall. Someone just finished getting married at the top of the falls. Pretty cool spot. From there you'll get multiple views of the around 25 foot Upper Falls as you make your way down a series of switchbacks to the Lower Falls area. At the base, you'll follow an elevated boardwalk above the creek with moss-covered rocks and a beautiful cascade in front of you. This is anything but what I expected to see back here. It's like a hidden oasis in the canyon. This, but this green with the cascade through the moss and everything is just gorgeous. And the green and the water absolutely just pops. It's beautiful. I said it looked kind of like a hidden oasis or something back here. It kind of does. You're right, yeah. 
This has been described as one of the most gorgeous destinations in the Black Hills, and after seeing it, I wouldn't argue. What a cool start to our time in South Dakota. Three different waterfalls, all completely unique. Now we're leaving Spearfish Canyon and finally heading to Deadwood. While it doesn't seem like we've done much yet, we had gone to Devil's Tower this morning and so we were a little tired. And from here, it was about 30 minutes on a winding road to get to Deadwood. Pop's very excited that we're in Deadwood. He's taking his own photos to do his own video about it. We made it to Deadwood. How excited are you, Pops? This is really cool. Second only tombstone probably. <laughs> First Adams Museum. Deadwood is a gold rush era town that had its heyday from 1876 to 1879. During that time it had a population of over 25,000 and it had many iconic Old West figures like Wyatt Earp, Calamity Jane, and Wild Bill who all visited. If you're interested in Deadwood's history then the Adams Museum is one of the best places to dive into it. While the museum is not that big, it does have many great exhibits and so many things that you can read about. Since my dad is obsessed with cowboy history, we spent over an hour just walking around slowly and taking it all in. Oh, and they also have a two-headed cow here as well. Alright, so I always say that Pops is 6'7 and that he's tall, but this is the world's tallest man. Pops, you look short compared to that person. <laughs> I don't know, that's a good question. He was 8 foot 11. A little taller than me. <laughs> Something cool is that this picture shows both 1898 and 2023, and we're actually seeing in this hotel, which you can see in 1898, and you can also still see in 2023. So that's a pretty historic spot to stay. I'm excited. After leaving the museum, we decided to drive to two more historic spots before leaving our car and just walking around historic Deadwood. The first of these two stops was Mount Moriah Cemetery. I'm into cowboy history as much as the next person, but Pops over here is very excited, so I'm kind of just following him around on this uh, Deadwood exploration. What is it about cowboy history that makes you excited, Pops? It's just the, the way that the West was founded. I mean, the guys were tough, they were resourceful, uh, they were people you didn't mess with, and I don't know, it's just very engaging and endearing to me. The main reason people visit the cemetery is to see the graves of Calamity Jane and Wild Bill. They're buried right next to each other and there's a good story about that that Pops tells in his video that I'll link to in the description. Pops is up by the gravesite still, but about 100 yards from there, there's supposed to be a good overlook of Deadwood, so that's where we're going. It's about 10 minutes to walk up here from the parking area, but the view is certainly worth it. The trees are kind of blocking the view, but that's still a cool lookout over Deadwood. After finishing our time in the cemetery, we drove back through the city of Deadwood and up on a dirt road to our next stop. We took a break from living out Pop's cowboy dreams. We're hiking to the Mount Roosevelt Friendship Tower before we go back into the city and explore some more. From where you park in the mountains above Deadwood, it's about one mile round trip to hike up to the Friendship Tower. It is a gradual uphill the entire way, and as you get closer to the top, you start getting some good views out into the distance. Well, it's not a tough hike. You definitely feel the elevation up here. We're at about 5,600 feet, but we made it. This 31-foot stone tower was the first tribute to Theodore Roosevelt and it was built in 1919. I'm actually surprised there's no door and this is open to climb. Made it to the top, those are some steep steps, but it's a cool view up here. What's up, Pops? <laughs> the idea for the tower was put in place by Seth Bullock, who was the sheriff of Deadwood and a lifelong friend of Theodore Roosevelt. When Roosevelt died, he really wanted to erect a monument, and this is what he created. Look who's coming up! All right. Pops, well done! I think it's so cool, the story about how this cowboy Seth Bullock dedicated this to uh, Theodore Roosevelt, who was his friend. And then, what's his name? It was built, and Bullock died three months later. Wow. It's really fun that this is open and that they allow you to climb it even when no one's there. That was a cool stop. Now we're heading back into Deadwood. Heading back into the city, we made it to our last stop before exploring the downtown area, the Days of 76 Museum. All right, Pops, rodeos and cowboys. Here we go. I see how smart you there. Who's that? That's uh, one of the guys from the Three Stooges. Who is it? Why are you reading? Uh, you don't know who it is either. Oh my gosh. I just went blank. He's the guy who... <laughs> Hey Siri. He doesn't know who it is either. Hey Siri. All right, we're leaving. That picture there is 
Will Rogers. It's good. You know just as much as I do. He was a cowboy who said, I never met a man I didn't like. The Days of 76 is an event that happens every year and that started in 1924. It began as a way to honor the first pioneers to Deadwood who made the journey to try to get gold in 1876. Since then, it's grown into an entire celebration with a rodeo and it's something that people come from all around to see every year. Hey Pops, they have a mural of you here. <laughs> this was in my younger days before I had a beard. Yeah. They have this entire wall of historic guns and you can read about each one of the guns in this notebook. It's a well put together museum and the amount of time that you spend there depends on how much you want to learn about this history. Don't forget to go downstairs though and to see all of the different carriages they have on display. Cowboy Pop says he has never sat in a stagecoach and so he's actually excited to go into this one if he can fit. I don't think it's good. <laughs> you would have been a bad cowboy back in the day. You don't fit anywhere. How's it feel? Very bouncy. They have dozens of different horse-drawn carriages to see down here, including a fire engine, and this is definitely my favorite part of the museum. When we had had our fill of the museum, we headed to downtown Deadwood, parked our car, and went to explore our historic hotel. All right, we're checking into our hotel, which has been here for over 120 years. And here is our room. And there is the bathroom. And it is located right on the main street. So you can basically see the main street, the Deadwood, out the dirty window. Also, this hotel is supposedly haunted and the hallway mirror is where a lot of people see orbs. So we'll uh, have to check that out later tonight. The Bullock Hotel describes itself as the Jewel of Deadwood and it was built in 1895 and is the oldest hotel still in the city. It was built by Seth Bullock who we talked about earlier was a friend of Theodore Roosevelt. One of the best things about the hotel is its location in downtown Deadwood as it makes it easy to walk to anything you want to see in the downtown area. We headed first to Saloon 10 where Wild Bill was killed and to go to one of the reenactments of this famous event. The only museum in the world with a bar. That's where we're at right now. When you enter the bar, be sure to turn around and to see the actual chair that Wild Bill was sitting in when he was killed. Then you can head to the back for the reenactment when it's the right time, and if you're like Pops, you can volunteer to be a part of it. Pops volunteered to be in the show, so he's played poker in the Wild Bill show right now. Dang it, Charlie, I can't sit here and you know it. Now get out of that chair now. With great hesitation, took the empty chair. On all the room. It was discovered soon after the crimes of the world. Get out of here! Get out of here! Forever known as the dead man's hand. This was an early highlight of the trip to see Pops live out his cowboy dreams right there on the stage. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you for helping out. You should have given me your chair. I know, he got me shot. <laughs> I love it, it's sweet. What'd you get? It's his picture. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's fabulous. <laughs> After the reenactment, we just decided to walk around and to go into the different stores. <laughs> There's lots of fun stores down here with Western themed clothing and souvenirs. There's a distillery that focuses on sipping creams and had an amazing espresso shot. There's even the Big Dipper if you want to get some ice cream or if it's warm while you're there. If you want ice cream, that's the spot to go. I recommend Lemon Bar. Overall, it's just a fun place to explore for a half day. Last order of business before we get dinner, we're gonna see a shootout, which is right in front of our hotel. During the busy summer season, they have shootouts here three times a day, six days a week, with the website saying there's no killing on Sundays. Let's try that again. We're together now. Howdy, folks. Howdy. There we go. It's a whip. 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 It's only about 10 minutes long, but it's definitely a unique thing to see while you're in Deadwood. Our last order of business was to get food and we headed to Maverick's Steakhouse. Basically every place in this town is a casino, so we are eating over a casino, but I was told that this place is very good. 
Look at Pops trying to pretend like he's healthy. He got like a, you know, two pound of prime rib, but he got a salad to go along with it. All right, that's green stuff. See the green? Look at that. That color is green. <laughs> It's a good thing that Pop's got the salad because that's like a inch and a half of prime rib right there. He's going to go to sleep after this. <laughs> it was about 20 to $30 a person for a meal here, but my dad and I both liked our food and it was a fun spot for dinner. All right, we're standing in front of the haunted mirror. Do you see anything? <laughs> Just Pop's. That's it for our first day in South Dakota. That was a lot of fun. We'll see you tomorrow. If you're staying in downtown, be sure to go out at night and just walk around. They have a lot of cool lights on the old buildings and it's fun to see it at night. Checked out of our hotel in Deadwood and we are heading south. Our main goal for the day was to go see Mount Rushmore, which is only about an hour and 15 minute drive from Deadwood. You know us though, we decided we wanted to take the back way in to really experience the Black Hills, and so we did the two and a half hour version. Check that guy out. That is the biggest Smokey the Bear I have ever seen. Very cool. After passing Hill City, we turned onto the Needles Highway, which many say is one of the most scenic drives in the country. If you're planning on driving the Needles Highway, note that there are low, narrow tunnels, and this is our first. What do you think, Pops? That was a low, narrow tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> As you turn on Highway 87 to continue on the Needles Highway, there's an opportunity to turn off and see Sylvan Lake, and you should definitely do that. We made it to our first stop in Custer State Park, Sylvan Lake, and walk around a little bit and then continue on the Needles Highway. Sylvan Lake is one of the most popular areas in the Black Hills for hiking, as it's also a jumping off point for Black Elk Peak, which is the tallest mountain in South Dakota. The lake is man-made and was created in 1891 when a dam was built across Sunday Gulch Creek. If you're interested in hiking, you can take the one mile loop around the lake which gives you many amazing views. You can also just use it as a spot to picnic and climb many of the different boulders. There's some parts of the trail where you have to do a little bit of scrambling. The trail is generally easy, but there are a few places where you have to climb rocks on the backside. That's pretty cool. There's a small waterfall right in the crack of this rock. I highly recommend you do the entire trail as it's really cool to see the rock formations on the backside plus to see the dam itself. You guys, look at how cool the trail is in this section. Going up the stairs and then going through this little cave almost. Wow, this is a Pretty amazing trail. And then you come out and look at the view. You can actually walk out on these stone steps over to the dam. Walking out to the dam is one of the most unique parts as they put a series of rock steps in the water and it's such a fun trail to walk. Also, you may have noticed that this lake played a pivotal part in the movie National Treasure Book of Secrets. Wow, this trail is blowing my mind right now. I wish I would have done it with Pops. I told him I was just going to take some photos and then I just got so drawn in that I kept going and going and going. So I think he's hanging out by the front. But man, if you get a chance to do this and you don't mind that little scrambling, this is amazing. Pops is getting his fish filming on while I was walking around. I, was crying, <laughs> I tried to just take some pictures and then I just couldn't stop. No, that was good. That was smart to walk around the whole thing. As we said goodbye to Sylvan Lake, we started what most people said is the best part of the Needles Highway. Just one more note about clearance, you definitely do not want to do this if your car does not meet those. There are many tunnels carved directly in the rocks. That is narrow. The Needles Eye Tunnel is the first you'll get to and the most narrow of the bunch. It's only 8 foot wide and 9 foot 9 inches tall. I've heard it gets very busy with long lines, but luckily for us when we went, it wasn't busy at all and we were able to walk through. I wouldn't recommend walking through when it's busy as only one car can go at a time and both directions alternate. If you walk in though, be prepared to hide behind the uh, wall because it is very narrow. After exploring for a while, we decided it was finally time to drive through. 
Look at Pops, he's getting an epic uh, 360 shot for us, hopefully, once these people come through. Here's that 360 degree shot, and as you can see, the rocks are very close to the car as we're passing through, and the canyon itself is very narrow above us. I even saw some of the bigger trucks have to bend in their mirrors to make it through, and a lot of people were actually going through on motorcycles, which would be amazing. Needles Highway's blowing my mind and we're like two miles in. From here, the road hugs the hillside and has great views out in the distance and back towards the tunnel you went through. We even met a fan on the road, and if you see us, be sure to come up and say hi. The road continues to be narrow and windy in this section with about a top speed of 25 miles per hour. Here you'll also see the incredible rock formations, which I'm sure is where the Needles Highway gets its name. And then there's another turnout for a second trailhead to hike up to Black Elk Peak, which also has a plaque that talks about the original inspiration for Mount Rushmore. They had the idea of doing Westerners like Jim Bridger, Kit Carson, uh, or Red Cloud. That was their idea originally, but I guess it got tweaked over time into the idea of the presidents. Don't miss this pullout. There's a lot of great views and you definitely want to take some time to enjoy them. For us, we continued driving, not knowing we were leaving the iconic needle section behind with only a couple more views back towards it. This is also where we crossed our second tunnel, which was the Iron Creek Tunnel that's eight foot, nine inches wide and 10 foot, 10 inches high. Since we wanted to spend as much time as possible at Mount Rushmore, we decided to cut across at Playhouse Road instead of finishing the Needles Highway. This allowed us to easily connect with Iron Mountain Road and start the classic drive to Mount Rushmore. We are just starting the Iron Mountain Road drive and look at what we've seen. Mount Rushmore, way out in the distance. She said you thought maybe it would be bigger? Yeah, I don't know, I mean, it's very, very far away, but I, I don't know, somehow I thought it would be bigger. Iron Mountain Road was built in the 1930s to connect Custer State Park and Mount Rushmore, and its architect built the winding road with some unique features, the first of which are three tunnels that spotlight the mountain as you drive through them. After the first tunnel, keep your eyes peeled for the Norbeck Overlook, which you can park at and then walk out to to get some great views of Mount Rushmore from afar. We're still pretty far away from Mount Rushmore, but that was a cool overlook. The road continues to wind through the hills and gain elevation as it heads up to its next tunnel, which gives you another view of Mount Rushmore out in the distance. Again, you need a good zoom lens to be able to see the faces through the tunnel though. There's one more tunnel before you make it to Mount Rushmore, and this is by far the best with the clearest view of the mountain out in the distance. This might seem like overkill in the video, but I wanted to share this as most people will not experience Mount Rushmore this way, and I thought it was pretty cool. After leaving Iron Mountain, we connected with Highway 244 and continued towards the National Memorial. Mount Rushmore itself doesn't cost a visit, but there is a parking fee of $10 for passenger cars. We made it to Mount Rushmore. That was an incredibly cool way to drive in. If you can do it, you should definitely do it. Any thoughts, Pops? They call it a pigtail, which <laughs> makes sense. I mean, it's crazy the way that they set that road up and the, and the way that it, the vistas open up when you go through the tunnel is really sick. And this is Pops' first time visiting Mount Rushmore and my first time as well. So I'm excited. Let's go experience it. All right. Even in early May when we visited, there were still a bunch of people that were coming to the monument. We hadn't eaten all day, so our first stop was at Carver's Cafe where we grabbed a couple sandwiches and we just sat on a bench and hung out and watched everybody go by. After finishing lunch, we walked down the Avenue of the Flags, which was created in 1976 and has a flag for each of the states and territories before arriving at the official viewpoint. It's cool, if you look at that far side up there, there's a big area there, and so there'll be plenty of room for my head, because I have a larger head, and so <laughs> I think I'd fit right to the left of Washington there, so uh, maybe in 100 years. Pops, is it just as small as you imagined in your first comment? No, no, that thing is monstrous, but we were far away. <laughs> it's really impressive, wow. All right, we're gonna head to the visitor center and then out to the presidential trail. The visitor center is located below the viewpoint and at the back of the amphitheater. From Memorial Day to September 30th, they have a lighting ceremony every evening that you can see here. Here's a picture of what Mount Rushmore looked like before it was carved. The visitor center only really has one big room of exhibits, but it's incredible to see. There are a bunch of old photographs showcasing the creation, there are plaster casts of the different models. There's information about the sculptor and how the area itself was chosen. 
It actually took 14 years from 1927 to 1941 to carve the monuments. You can see this tram car that they used to get up the mountain right there to work on it. Watch the movie, went through the exhibits, now we're heading out on the presidential trail. There really isn't a lot to do in this memorial and most people can probably see it in a half day. The presidential trail is the main thing that people do while they're here and it's about a three quarter of a mile loop. It doesn't take long to walk around to the boardwalk and then when you're on the boardwalk, there's different viewpoints for each of the four heads. The first is George Washington and you can actually see him through this cool viewpoint in the cave. Next up is a direct view of Lincoln where you can see the face well and you can understand how big they truly are. Each of the faces are 60 feet tall with their eyes measuring around 11 feet wide. This is the closest you can get to the monument. The last major observation deck gives you a decent view of Thomas Jefferson and Theodore Roosevelt. There's the observation deck we were just at right there. Make sure you guys go see Pop's video he's making right now. Look at that. Look at that work he's putting in. As you continue around, you'll start heading down a bunch of stairs going back towards the visitor center. Pro tip, take the route clockwise because if you don't, you're gonna be going up 400 steps instead of down them. As you make your way down the last set of stairs, the views are blocked by the trees and then you'll get to a power generator which talks about how 90% of the mountain was carved with dynamite but a little bit of it was carved with jackhammers. Fortunately, the sculptor's studio is closed, but you can peek inside and see some of the models. The sculptor's studio has a scale model of the original idea for the mountain, and it is open during specific days in the summer. If you don't want to go up and down all the steps, the best way to do it is just to go out clockwise and then go back that same way, and you don't have to go up and down the stairs. If you do that, you will miss the sculptor's studio though. All right, we made it back up all the stairs. Pops, what's the last order of business? Ice cream, baby. We'll see if it's good here. <laughs> people, a lot of people have it, so. Must be good. This is such a cool place. Way cooler than I expected it to be. Definitely come out here and check it out if you're in the area. Well worth your time. So apparently Thomas Jefferson was the principal author of the Declaration of Independence and America's first ice cream recipe. So I got the Thomas Jefferson vanilla and salted caramel. Not a bad spot for a scoop of ice cream. It's cool because in the ice cream shop they have Thomas Jefferson's original recipe from the 1780s and then they printed it on the back for you. You can buy this for a dollar if you want to go home and try to make it yourself. All right, now we got about a 45 minute drive to Rapid City. As you head through Keystone, it feels like one of those towns you'd see outside of a national park with lots of different attractions. You guys wouldn't believe what it's like to travel with Pops and I. We only made it five minutes to Rapid City before we saw the world's largest Bigfoot. Who doesn't stop for that? Remember, Pops is 6'7". It's not even as tall as the foot. This Bigfoot can be found at Dolls Chainsaw Art and it stands at 23 feet tall, greeting people who drive by on the road. If you're lucky, you can see them actually working on a project while you're here, and there's a lot of other fun chainsaw art, such as the big chair. Moving on from there, we didn't stop again until we were on the outskirts of Rapid City. Before heading to Rapid City, we're at Dinosaur Park to explore another unique attraction that was trying to get some of that Mount Rushmore tourism. Dinosaur Park has been a loved attraction and part of the Rapid City skyline since the 1930s. It was a Depression-era project that was created to capitalize on the tourists coming to Mount Rushmore. The park is free to enter and it has seven dinosaur sculptures up on the hillside overlooking Rapid City. I talked to one couple who was here with their young child and who had been coming here since they were children themselves. Some of the dinosaurs were undergoing repair, but it definitely seems like a place that people still love. It's a quick stop, interesting history, well worth seeing, but not a lot to do here and it's still basically under construction. Heading on. We've been trying to stay at more unique hotels during our road trip, so we decided to stay at the Hotel Alex Johnson, which has been here for over 75 years. Here's all the people who have stayed at this hotel, including five different presidents and Buzz Aldrin. Something unique about Rapid City is that they have statues of all of the presidents right in their downtown. So you can do 
a downtown walk and see all the presidents, and here's George Washington. Known affectionately as the City of Presidents, they started putting in these statues in 1999. It takes a while to decide how the president's going to be depicted, so the most recent one that they have here is Barack Obama. Pops wanted to get us a table while I was looking at some more of the presidents, and we're gonna eat right here. Located in a historic firehouse from 1915, this is South Dakota's oldest brewery with over 30 years of making beer. It's a great spot to have a meal with murals on the walls, old fire trucks, and all sorts of things to see while you're waiting. Pop's got some type of shepherd's pie thing. And I got the hot shot corned beef sandwich with a potato. I'm excited, I think this looks awesome. Great kind of a take on shepherd's pie a little bit. It's got mashed potatoes underneath. I like it a lot. That was a fun spot for dinner in Rapid City. We're gonna see a couple more monuments, walk around a little bit, and then call it a day. Pops talked a lot about how good he was at guessing presidents, so we decided to walk around and see how many he could guess. Okay, he's got a saddle and a cowboy hat. Maybe that's Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, maybe? Pops was wrong. It's Calvin Coolidge. I didn't know anything about him with a cowboy hat and a saddle. That's news to me. Pops is going with Ulysses Grant. He's 0 for 3 right now. I'm not 0 for 3. <laughs> James, James Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well thanks for playing what was surely an exciting YouTube game of Can We Name the President? And uh, that is it for today. We'll see you tomorrow. I should also note that our hotel had a really cool rooftop bar where you could sit and get a drink and hang out by a fire pit. Okay, that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Checking out of our hotel and we are heading to Badlands National Park. All right, before we make it to the Badlands, I have to show you something even more exciting. The Quarter Pounder with Cheese statue. The statue is not edible. Do not eat the statue. <laughs> the statue was created for the 50th anniversary of the Quarter Pounder, and it was put here because supposedly Rapid City has the most Quarter Pounder fans per capita of any city in the United States. People were definitely looking at me like I was insane for taking pictures of that onto the Badlands. Leaving Rapid City and heading towards the Badlands, you'll go to the town of Wall, which is where Wall Drug is. If you want to play a fun game, count how many Wall Drug signs you see on the way. And if you want to learn all about Wall Drug, don't worry, we're going to visit it later in this video. Before heading into the Badlands, be sure to get some gas. And if you stop at Badlands Trading Post, you can also buy the head of a rattlesnake if you want. On the way to the Badlands, we saw a massive prairie dog statue, so we pulled over to see what that was all about. Uh, Pop's got some prairie dog food and he's gonna go feed the prairie dog one dollar for I food. Gotta, I gotta move these children out a little bit. So <laughs> the prairie dog. There were a lot of prairie dogs here and yes, you could pay to feed them if you were interested. There's like a little baby prairie dogs. For some reason, Pop's wanted to get really close to the prairie dogs to feed them, but it looks like they were fed a lot so they weren't afraid of him. Did you ever think you were gonna feed prairie dogs? This has been my destiny. <laughs> Bucket list. This is supposedly the world's largest prairie dog. 6'7 Pops, it says it's about 11 to 12 feet tall. That is a, a big prairie dog right there. Welcome to the Badlands. Made it to National Park number 49, Badlands National Park. It's not the best day for the park. It's pretty cold and they said that there's rain coming in in the afternoon. We're gonna to try to get as much done as we can in the morning. We started our day at the northeast entrance and our first stop was at Big Badlands Overlook. From this viewpoint, you can get a good understanding of why this area is known as the Badlands. It's had many different names over the years, but almost all of them relate to how tough it would be to travel through here. As you can imagine, if you were heading west and you left the plains and saw these formations, which were very difficult to travel through, it would probably seem almost impossible to continue on. What's your first impression of the Badlands? I don't know what I expected, but um, the lateral lines with the green and the color differentiation is really, really beautiful. Leaving the first viewpoint, we headed towards Badlands Loop Road and the Visitor Center. 
Before we even get to the visitor center, we're doing the three trails right near the entrance, the door, the windows, and the notch. This quarter mile trail is wheelchair accessible on an elevated boardwalk, and all three of these trails deal with an area called the Badlands Wall. The Badlands Wall separates the upper and lower prairie area, and it's basically a 60 mile long cliff that's continuously eroding and has all of the formations you'd expect to see at the park. The door trail takes you to a break in the wall and allows you to walk out and see the vast landscape in front of you and even walk down onto it if you're interested. It's cool that you can walk the boardwalk or you can basically just come down here and explore as much as you want. They let you kind of walk wherever you want down here. This is a really weird consistency. It feels almost like a hardened mud. You can kind of see how it's just changing and shifting with the rains. The geology of the Badlands is the park's main feature, and they believe some of the rock here dates back over 70 million years. It's pretty incredible that they allow you to get off the boardwalk and just wander around, and we saw people almost a half mile out. We're heading out on the Notch Trail, which is the one that I'm the most excited about doing in the National Park. Pops is about to climb a ladder in the desert, I think. I don't know what I expected from this park, but it's very unique so far. Just the way that you have these crumbling hillsides and the different colors, it definitely feels otherworldly, which I'm sure is used to describe this a lot. And especially when you get up to those viewpoints and you see way out into the distance, it's pretty cool. When you're looking around, it just feels like it's towers of dried mud. It's interesting. Yeah, and you can imagine how much this would change every time there's a rain. It probably looks different than it does right now. Do you know that the Notch Trail is the most popular in the park, and so the parking lot can fill early, especially on busy holidays and weekends. Luckily for us, it was the middle of May and there weren't too many people here. We've made it to the ladder section. How are you feeling, Pops? You good with the ladder? Yeah, no worries. All right. The ladder section is what makes the Notch Trail so popular, as people want to do it and they want to get photos doing it as well. You kind of don't need the ladder for most of the way up until about here, then it gets a little bit more vertical. Made it to the top, no big deal. I think going down will be a little crazier though. I think it will be tougher for going down. Look at Puffs, crushing that ladder. Raise your hand if you thought he wasn't gonna come up here. <laughs> no. I thought so. Well done. The only bummer about the ladder section is it's kind of one person at a time, so if there's a lot of people waiting on either side, it can take a little bit of time. That was fun. I love little unique things on trails like that. Plus, look at these views we're heading into. When you make it up the ladder, the trail has about a 40 foot drop off on one side and it can get a little bit narrow as you're making your way around. Is this part worse for you than the ladder? I'm far enough in, <laughs> inland here, so I'm okay. I really enjoyed this section with views back towards the ladder that we had climbed up and down into the small canyon to the left. And note that it's about 1.5 miles round trip for this trail. The terrain is definitely a little challenging in this part. There's some ups and downs, a little bit slippery. It's very doable, but it's just, you know, I have to go a little slower. As you continue back, it flattens out and widens as you head towards the notch. Made it to the notch. Pretty great views. You can see the visitor center and one of the other trails below you, but just wide expanse out in front. From the notch, you can soak in the views and then you turn around and head back the way you came. It's not you know, the Rocky Mountains in Southern California, it is beautiful, but it's a different kind of beauty, so. I agree. We made it back to the ladder. There were a bunch of people on it, a couple that were having trouble, so we had to wait a little while for our turn to head down. Thumbs up for Pops climbing down the ladder. I didn't know if he was gonna do it, and he did it with no problem. That was really fun. <laughs> we made it back to the parking area from the Notch Trail, and now we're on the Window Trail, which leaves from basically the same place. This trail is also wheelchair accessible and it's the easiest of the bunch at around a tenth of a mile round trip. When you get to the end, there's a bench you can sit at and there's great views down into the canyons and out over the Badlands. All right, well, there's the window trail. Now we're heading back to the car and heading on to more of the park. One of the nice things about this park is how easy it is to explore. Those three trails were all from the same parking area and then a lot of the other trails are easy or they just lead to overlooks that aren't too far to walk to. Our next stop was the Cliff Shelf Nature Trail, which is accessible for about the first 100 meters. 
You can see way up there, that's the notch that we were just at on the last trail. This is the overlook right here where the accessible portion ends and from here you have to hike upstairs to get up to that last one. This trail didn't seem to be very popular but we really enjoyed it as it was one of the only trails where you could see trees and shrubbery as most of the Badlands is pretty sparse. They call this area a Badlands Oasis basically because there's not really much moisture in the park but there is moisture here, which is why there's so many trees. So it's been used for thousands of years as a place for people to camp, just to get out of that crazy sun and heat. This really is a beautiful trail and not what you'd expect to see in the harsh climate of the Badlands. After climbing the stairs up to a view of the notch from below, you'll make your way back down the stairs and finish the loop. Finished our first four hikes in the National Park. Now we're going on to the visitor center to get some lunch. About five minutes down the road, we arrived at the park's main visitor center. Basically done nothing in the park so far. We came in, we did all the hikes right here, and we went to the visitor center. We have all this left to see. The park visitor center has all the things you would normally expect, like great exhibits on the wildlife, the fossils, the history, and the area as a whole. There's also a movie you can watch, and there's a store where you can pick up souvenirs. Right next to the visitor center was the Cedar Pass Lodge, which was basically the only place with food, so that's where we headed for lunch and I decided to go have zoos on the Indian fry bread and I think that was the right call. That's a lot of food. It's a huge fry bread. <laughs> Plus we got protein bars in the car. We both really liked the fry bread and be sure to share it as it's a lot to eat for one person. From there we headed out on the Badlands Loop Road to spend the rest of the day in the park. Look at the lines on the mountains out there. Just so unique. And then the green valley. Right about here is when it started to rain on us, but you know we try to do as much as possible, even in the rain. Next up, we're doing a short trail called the Fossil Trail, basically just a walk. We're also lucky slash unlucky in that there's only 16 inches of rain that falls in this park in the entire year, and it's falling while we're here. This trail is accessible and only a quarter of a mile on an elevated boardwalk. This is a really easy trail, nice for little kids as there's lots of things that you can touch that talk about the fossils and there's actual kind of fossil sculptures that you can touch. So definitely worth it if you're coming with little kids. As you continue on Badlands Loop Road, there's about 20 different overlooks you can stop at. The rain's clearing everybody out, basically all these overlooks and no people at them now, but the views are still pretty incredible. It's a little bit more eerie than normal probably, but still pretty incredible. This was the White River Valley Overlook and it was one of our favorite in the park. Again, we're the only people at the viewpoint in the rain. I'm just saying how that rain coming down, I really feel like it's pulling out the colors here, but especially the reds, it's really pulling down. This was the Bigfoot Pass Overlook and it was one that was well worth stopping at since you could see the road going through the mountains in front of you. Leaving here, we drove over Bigfoot Pass and we were the only people at a couple more overlooks as we made our way back into the park. The rain is supposed to go for the next two hours, so we're just going to go ahead and head to Wall Drug and then come back in the park and have about three to four hours to finish exploring. From the Pinnacles entrance station, it's only about a 10 minute drive to get to Wall Drug. For anyone who drives a Tesla, they have chargers right near the Wall Drug as well. We're running to Wall Drug as fast as we can because of the rain. Gotta get my nickel coffee. So this is the main street of Wall Drug where they have all sorts of different shops. Wall Drug is basically the perfect roadside attraction and tourist stop. It feels like a giant cowboy mall with all sorts of different shops and things you can interact with. There's even a traveler's chapel in here. Wall Drug was started by a pharmacist in 1931 who bought this store in basically the middle of nowhere. Business was slow and they didn't know whether they were going to make it until Dorothy, his wife, thought of giving out free ice water to travelers heading to Mount Rushmore. That decision skyrocketed the business at Wall Drug and they still have some of those same marketing gimmicks when you come in today. Coffee for a nickel. Thankful to be out of the rain, we grabbed two slices of pie, grabbed our nickel coffee, and grabbed a donut to try. I mean, coffee for a nickel, is there anywhere else in the entire world where you can think of that you can get that? All right, we got cherry pie, blueberry pie, and you know, a maple donut to try as well. That coffee is a nickel. 
Is it worth a nickel? Absolutely. <laughs> what about the pie? How's the pie? It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It tastes exactly like what you'd expect from diner coffee. And I have to say, the pie is very strong. The blueberry, very good. But they can't warm it up, which is a little unfortunate. I would like to have it warmed up. Anything is better than being in the rain in Badlands, so. though. Now that we warmed up with coffee and pie, it's time to explore Wall Drug. And here is the map of all of the things that you can see here, including a T-Rex, and of course their best bathrooms are in the back. Quick pops, go ahead, hop on the jankalope in the rain. <laughs> What's it worth to you? <laughs> I'll give you a cup of coffee. Yeah, for a nickel? <laughs> As you can see, this is not the ideal time to be at Waldrug, but there's a Mount Rushmore here if you don't want to go. There's a large jackalope you could ride. There's bison you can see. It's definitely a jack of all trades type store. The T-Rex eats every 12 minutes. Hopefully it'll start eating soon. challenge you pops to the shooting gallery pick Done. your poison Done. pistol okay. or, or a rifle well first of all where's your dollar i don't have one i yeah, need, I I need a some. dollar if you've watched our videos before then you've probably seen us do these shooting galleries at least five or six times we're suckers we can never pass them up unfortunately it's not keeping score and it's relatively easy so i think we're here for the fun more than the competition on this one it was still raining, but it wasn't too bad, so we had to ride the jackalope before leaving. Wow. Woo! All right, Pops, what do you think of Waldrug? Waldrug's just fun. It's very Western, which is cool. You know I love that. Kind of kitschy, but, you know, it's fun. You get something to eat. You can find some souvenirs and lots of different activities to do. Yeah, it's just a fun stuff. Well, my plan to hopefully have it not be raining when we went back into the park didn't really work out, so we're still going to go back into the park and see a little bit more. You remember the Bigfoot we saw yesterday? Well, this is the same company, another store, and it's a jackalope, and apparently you can go inside of it. Oh man, I am so excited about this thing. This is awesome. <laughs> Going in the jackalope. Oh man, you didn't even have to duck. They made it your size. This is like a magical world in here. This is so incredible. <laughs> this jackalope's about five minutes away from Waldrug, and it was built in 2022. It stands about 40 feet tall and you can climb all the way up to the top and walk out onto the patio. Amazing. <laughs> There's his chin right there and his, look at his horns up high, my gosh. <laughs> this is amazing, the world wide jackalope. After hanging out with the large jackalope for longer than I care to admit, we started the 10 mile drive back into the national park at the Pinnacles entrance. Two things I wasn't expecting, one, a buffalo, and two, a little bit of sun, potentially. Not gonna get my hopes up yet, though. Heading back into the park, we decided to drive Sage Creek Rim Road, which is an unpaved road that goes into the more remote parts of the park. Wow, look at the layers out there, that's amazing. As a photographer, one of my favorite things to take pictures of are mountain layers, so I was really excited to be greeted with this view when we got back. Guys, look at what we saw right behind us, a rainbow. We're running back to see if we can get to the overlook for the Badlands before the rainbow goes away. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. Rainbow, so incredible. Oh, we're losing it, we're losing it. Literally within 10 seconds, our rainbow is gone, but I got one picture. When we went out to Waldrug, we were a little down about the rain potentially messing up our one day in the park. And then we came back to these views and the wildlife we're about to see, and it made it one of the top parks I had been to in a long time. Also, as great as Badlands Loop Road is, Sage Creek Rim Road is even better. Being so remote, we basically saw no other cars and just insane vistas in every direction. As we drove forward towards the prairie town, we came across a massive herd of bison. All right, look at all the bison that are along the road right here. We are getting a show right now. There are so many bison over there, and there's even some 
on the road over there. Wow. We're in prairie dog town right now. I don't see any prairie dogs. I think the, the bison might have taken over. This is Robert's prairie dog town, but there's not a lot going on here right now because of the rain. It's still cool to see a couple of them and all the bison. I've seen videos where there are a lot more prairie dogs, but just being able to see any here was pretty cool. Plus the bison were so active, we saw them running around, chasing each other, and even fighting, just making for an incredible wildlife viewing experience. Oh my gosh, guys, Badlands is blowing my mind right now. Look at all of these guys. There's so many of them. Wow. We might be facing a bison jam here. <laughs> just us and the bison. We saw one car go past already, but. There's got to be 200 of them out here. All right, well, it doesn't look like we're going anywhere anytime soon, so not upset about it, though. We tried to count while we were sitting here waiting, and we counted into the hundreds, and that was just what we could see around us. So we've been waiting for about 15 minutes, and the, the bison have not moved at all. So we're going to turn around and go back the way we came, but wow, that is cool to see. We were actually hoping to continue on Sage Creek Rim Road and drive the entire thing, but because of the bison jam, we just turned around and went back the way we came. There was more activity in the prairie dog town on the way back, so that was icing on the cake. Hobbs and I have been trying really hard to get a prairie dog and a bison in the same shot, and we have accomplished it with this one right here. As we started to drive back, more people were entering the area, probably because the rain had ended. I'm still not 100% sure what this is, but based on looking online, I think it may be a pronghorn. There were about a dozen of them on the hillside as we were driving out. Look at that bison, he's standing up at the viewpoint. He's trying to take in the view as well. This bison is right next to our road and he does not like pops, so we are leaving. As we were heading into the park again to see a few more viewpoints, we saw a couple big horned sheep up on the hillside. They had what appeared to be tags on them, which I'm guessing is to track their population as they're moving through the park. And they were right next to the road, so we had to be really careful while we were driving. Look at all the colors on the mountains. You got the green at the bottom, and then the yellow, and like a purple red, and then a white. It's beautiful. The Yellow Mounds Overlook is a small turnout with space for about 10 cars, and it has some of the most unique views you can see with all the colors. From there we headed over to Pinnacle's Overlook as we were told this is the best spot in the park for sunset. Of course there was no sunset for us today, but we still wanted to be able to see it. It was another amazing viewpoint in the park and be sure to let us know if you've seen it at sunset and how it was. Absolutely incredible day in the Badlands, no sunset and the rain starting again and a war pops out. He's hanging out in the car right now. But hopefully you enjoyed this adventure we had today and we will see you tomorrow from more South Dakota. Starting our day with our third and final visit to Wall Drug, this time for nickel coffee and donuts. If you're staying in the town of Wall, then why would you not go to Wall Drug for donuts and coffee the next day? We already knew the donuts were good, and we already knew the coffee was acceptable. This is easily the cheapest meal we have had the entire trip. Maple donuts and nickel coffee at the Wall Drug. And when you buy nickel coffee at Wall Drug, you get exactly what you pay for. <laughs> All right, here's Pop's review of the free ice water. Water. Would you drive out of your way for it? Well, about maybe a hundred years ago. <laughs> it's an incredibly cool story about how they use the free ice water thing to get people here. And look, you can still pull up your ice water outside as well. Pop's tried to bail on riding the jackalope yesterday in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Saying goodbye to Wall Drug, and we are heading on our drive to Sioux Falls. Heading east, our first stop of the day was at the Minuteman Missile National Historic Site. What we're about to see is just from the top, so we're just looking at it from right here, but that is what it looks like down inside. This is known as the Delta-09 Missile Silo, and you can visit it self-guided and see the missile from above through the glass window. There's a missile in there. At one point they had a fully operational missile here with a nuclear warhead on it and it was one of 150 in South Dakota. 
Now it's just a dummy missile that you can see from above and it's one part of the Minuteman Missile National Historic Site. Next we took about a 15 minute drive to get to the actual visitor center. The first thing to do at the visitor center is to see the 30 minute movie which gives you a great introduction to how unique this part of history was. Plus there's a bookstore where you can buy things and then there's amazing exhibits that you can walk through in the back. I especially enjoyed learning about how people lived inside of the missile silos while they were manning them. Yeah, I remember in kindergarten, they told us that, uh, you know, if there's this threat, get under your desk and turn your back to the light, as if <laughs> that would matter at all. Wow. In my older days, I feel like <clears throat> I would get under my desk, but I'd turn to look at the light. At least I'd see something cool before I passed. Yeah, so, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a crazy time, that's for sure. This shows the amount of nuclear warheads they had 1945 all the way up to the 1980s when worldwide there was 60,000 warheads. Here are the multiple times where the war could have started based on different things that was happening. Here's the range of what would be basically destroyed light destruction all the way out to here in Los Angeles if a bomb was dropped. As you can see, we were very engaged with the exhibits they had here, and we actually spent a lot more time here than I anticipated. Even though it's small, that was an incredible place to visit. Just really interesting history to read about, great exhibits. It's, it, it's important to be aware of this and to use your vote to uh, you know, move in the direction, whatever you would think it would be, that would be the safest for the world. Of course, right when you exit, there's a uh, wall drug sign. Now we're continuing the drive to Sioux Falls with some kind of crazy stops next. About 30 minutes later, we got off the highway again to visit 1880 Town. Got off on the freeway at the 1880s Town and there are goats roaming the gas station. Not what I expected to see. According to their website, the 1880 Town is the best stop on your South Dakota road trip. We knew if anything claimed to be that, then we could not pass it up. If you're familiar with the movie Dances with Wolves, then they have a whole bunch of stuff up here that are set pieces and photos and things like that from the movie. The highlight of this stop is definitely the replica town that you can find outside. Many of the buildings were built for a set of a movie that was going to spotlight the 1880s in the cowboy era. Filming for the movie was abandoned though, and they ended up giving the set piece to a local man named Clarence who used it for all of the artifacts he had collected from the era. We weren't even planning on stopping here and Pops didn't know he was going to get to have such a cool western experience today. Uh, this state is all about western stuff. If you're a western kind of history lover, it's pretty, pretty cool the way they have so many different things you can see. Some of the buildings are original and were actually relocated here from different parts of South Dakota. I knew Pops was a shady guy, but I didn't even realize that he was selling uh, snake oil and magic elixir over here. Hey, it's about 70 proof. <laughs> Guaranteed to do something. That's right. You'll feel better. <laughs> no, you'll feel different. <laughs> One of the things we do in every video, either Pops puts his head in something or he gets caught and put in jail. This is a Dakota Territory jail from the 1800s, Pops. No, I've been framed by you. <laughs> by far the coolest building on the property is the old saloon that they have, especially the inside. Whoa. Wow, this place is so cool. It's like a legit saloon. You can pay to dress up if you want to take pictures. You can play cards. This is a fun stop. My dad didn't want to leave before he played cards, so we just sat there, listened to the piano, played some cards in an old historic saloon. These are just a few of the things you can do and the buildings you can go into in this town, and it's definitely worth visiting. That was an incredibly huge surprise. I had no idea. And one of the things, like I said, I think already, but is I never realized how much of kind of this Western feel that South Dakota has. It's just, it's just everywhere. It's really cool. As you leave, be sure to watch for the skeleton walking the dinosaur on the left side of the road, but it's pretty hard to pull off and see it going east. Our next stop brought us to Pioneer Auto Show, which has been a loved roadside attraction since 1954. Basically, the first thing we saw when we walked in was a museum highlight, the Dukes of Hazzard's General Lee, complete with working horn.
That's amazing. Supposedly they made 17 of these and 16 were wrecked and this is the only remaining. If you're even remotely interested in cars, then this is something you should not miss. I saw a half dozen cars here I had never seen before in my life. There's I no actually, wheel. I actually used to have one of these. I drove it across the country. And we should get one for the next road trip. In case you are interested in the cars though, they have Jar Jar Binks here as well. Which one are you gonna be, Bo or Luke? I don't know which one's which. <laughs> I don't either. Be the one driving the car on the right. What do the Dukes of Hazard say? <laughs> Yeehaw! I don't know <laughs> there you go, perfect. <laughs> the website states it's not an ordinary auto museum and that they have an unrivaled collection of cars, motorcycles, tractors, rare antiques, vintage oddities, and so much more. I agree 100%. There are 15 to 16 different rooms that you could go into and you never knew what you were gonna see when you entered each one. Here's Elvis Presley's personal Harley Davidson. And this whole area is tractors and farm equipment. Neither one of us are car buffs, so we both agree that this is a pretty awesome museum. There is a lot to see, a lot of really unique cars, so definitely check it out if you're doing this drive and you're into cars. It was close to lunchtime and we had seen signs for Owl's Oasis for the last 20 miles or so, so we decided to stop in and have lunch there. My dad was also doing research online and he found that Owl's Oasis is supposedly famous for their pie, so we decided that that was another reason we should try it. So we're trying the pie before we even try our That's meal. Right. We were so hungry. <laughs> Banana cream pie. This you know, look at all that, that frosting on top. That's crazy. This is very good banana cream pie. I really like a big hunks of banana in it. Delicious. This is very good pie. If you like banana or coconut cream, definitely don't miss it. Pops went with country fried steak, and I went with the hot turkey sandwich. And they both look excellent. This place also has a shooting gallery, it has a grocery store with taxidermied animals in it, and it has a place where you can buy souvenirs. Definitely more diner style food, but they were incredibly efficient, got us in and out of there quickly, and the food was pretty good. Definitely get some of the pie, but we're headed on to a couple more stops, including the Corn Palace. Only about five minutes from Big Owls, right after you cross the Missouri River, be sure to pull out to see the Dignity of Earth and Sky sculpture. The 50 foot sculpture is stunning and even though it was a cloudy day when we were there, they said it's amazing when the sun's shining through it. It was built to honor the culture of the Lakota and the Dakota people who are indigenous to South Dakota. In the same parking lot as the statue, there's a rest area that has some interactive exhibits on Lewis and Clark and their journey. You can even climb up into the replica boat and you can get some great views out towards the Missouri River. All right, now we're heading to the Corn Palace. My dad and I were unaware of the Corn Palace until we had a YouTube live and dozens of people told us that we had to add it to our bucket list. So when we found ourselves in South Dakota, it was one of our top stops we had to see. It's been a long time coming, but we have officially made it to the Corn Palace. <laughs> Very excited. Known as the world's only corn palace, it's located in Mitchell, South Dakota, and if you want to get a lot of history on it, check out my dad's video that he made on the corn palace I'll link to in the description. For a brief synopsis on the history, in the late 19th century, these types of crop palaces popped up all over the Midwest, and at one point there was 34 of them. This one was built in 1892 to showcase South Dakota, and all of the murals on the outside are made out of corn. Inside you'll find a multi-use arena that's used for everything from basketball games to graduations. The murals are replaced every year and upstairs you can walk the halls and see all of the different murals they've had on the outside for the last 100 years. When you go outside you are located on the corn camera which you can view online. So there's a webcam, there's Pops right there, the webcam is across the street and we are on the corn camera right now, if you could see that, <laughs> there we are. <laughs> so yeah, there's a webcam and you can see people standing out here. It's fascinating to go out on the patio and to see the corn murals up close as you can really get a good feel for how they're created and how they use the different corns to make different colors. As soon as you come inside, you smell the popcorn popping. 
Pop's got us some popcorn to try in the Corn Palace. I'm eating popcorn. I'm eating corn in the Corn Palace. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like nothing I've ever had before. <laughs> Can you even buy your own popcorn to take home? Selling popcorn right here, baby. <laughs> corn Palace. Man, that's some ugly corn. I would not eat that. Corn Palace. After exploring the Corn Palace, be sure to head across the street to go to the gift shop where you can buy literally anything corn related you could ever want. What do you think? Should I take this home with me? In case you were wondering what the murals were, 2024 was famous South Dakotans, and it had everyone from Bob Barker and Wild Bill Hickok to Laura Ingalls Wilder. Say goodbye to the Corn Palace. Pops, if you had to pick the Coral Palace or Badlands National Park, who would you pick? They didn't have popcorn at Badlands. I don't know. That was a pretty incredible experience there, heading on. After many tears of joy from our time at the beautiful Corn Palace, we were able to pull ourselves away and continue towards Sioux Falls. Before reaching the city, we did want to stop and see the art at Porter Sculpture Park. I don't know if you can see it, but that bird is hunting in the water. This is the definition of an incredible roadside attraction with massive art pieces all out in a big field that you can walk around and explore. Many of the art pieces also have poems that go along with them. These birds are really out to get you, Pops! <laughs> the park is usually only open from May to October and it has a $10 admission fee. It was well worth it for us though, as these are incredible and they were all made by one man, Wayne Porter. This dragon was his first large piece in 1983. Check out how big that horse is with Pops right there. Wow, that thing is humongous. It's brutally cold and super windy out here, but man, these are cool sculptures. The largest sculpture is around 60 foot tall and it's a bullhead and it has sculptures inside of it. That's how big it is. It was cold and it was late in the day when we got here or else I would have spent a lot more time just walking around, reading the poems and taking it all in. I love this kind of stuff. So this is an incredibly cool stop, even with all the crazy wind. I didn't realize there was a time change. So we made it to our hotel and it's about 8.30 right now. So uh, that's the end of this day. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Today we're spending the entire day in Sioux Falls, starting in downtown with the coffee. Whenever we travel together, we become coffee snobs and we're always visiting new coffee shops on the lookout for the best Cortado. Bonus points if they also have amazing baked goods to go with it. And so we are excited to try Josiah's. I went with the homemade brown sugar Pop-Tart. Pops went with a caramel roll. We're starting strong today. That's right, that's right. <laughs> The spot was recommended to us by multiple people, and thanks for the pro tip, Josiah's was awesome. That was a great find, really good food there, fun pastries. Now we're heading out to walk around and see sculptures. I bet you didn't know that Sioux Falls is one of the largest annual exhibits of public sculptures in the world. They have an amazing sculpture walk that goes all throughout the downtown area and that has displayed over a thousand sculptures since it started in 2004. The sculptures here are on loan by the artists and each year the public votes on their favorite which is awarded a cash prize and then there's a best of show which is actually purchased by the city and put on permanent display. It's such a unique thing to see and it pairs really well with the historic downtown. I think this is my favorite one so far, this steampunk fish. Is that your favorite so far? I like that one. <laughs> I like that one. That looks like me. Yeah. This one's called I Wanna Go Home. And it's a look all the parents know, I'm sure. We walked a few more blocks in the downtown area to see a couple more sculptures, and then we headed over to our next stop, the Old Courthouse Museum. This museum is housed inside of the Old Courthouse, which was built in 1890 and is one of the oldest buildings in Sioux Falls. This is called the Unisphere, and it was something that was supposed to be built down here, but never was completed. It would have been pretty unique though, that's for sure. This is a collection of the people who work here. It's a hundred favorite artifacts that they have in their collection. The Batwing suit. Heck yes. Jumped from a plane in a bat suit. This is a boot stretcher from the 1880s. And uh, if Pops was a cowboy back then, he definitely would have been a boot stretcher. stretcher. This is an awesome collection. I wish all museums let their staff pick their favorite things. It's just a bunch of random cool stuff. 
The exhibits are housed on multiple floors and there's actually a lot that you can take in here, especially if you're interested in the city's history and the state's history. And here's the original historic courthouse. They have it set up for an event right now, but wow, it's beautiful. And here's the historic courtroom balcony. Fantastic museum, especially for free. Definitely come here if you're interested in history. Since we only had pastries for breakfast, we were hungry for lunch already and we headed over to Bread and Circus Sandwich Kitchen, which was featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Pops so went the Vietnamese fried chicken and it has the Sioux Falls flag right at the top. I love it. I got the Sioux Falls flag here. I love it. I got the Hawaiian bowl with spicy water, which is a jalapeno infused water and you pour as much as you want on it. This place is so good. This is their summer special. Definitely get it if you like these things, but Pops' sandwich is also very good. I'm loving my Vietnamese fried chicken. Never had before. It's excellent. After finishing lunch, we continued our art tour of Sioux Falls by going to one of the most iconic pieces in the sculpture walk, the Ark of Dreams. So the sentiment behind this is the idea to dream big and take a leap of faith. Well, it's easy to see this is a big dream here. Look at that thing. But that gap in the middle indicates that leap of faith that you have to take. And probably many of you know that feeling when you want to do something big in your life and you have to take that leap of faith. This is really portrayed well here. It really is an amazing sculpture that you need to see and be sure to come back at night and see it when it's lit up. Right next to that, there's a lot of murals, including the Sioux Falls mural, which is often popular for photos. Heading on from the murals and Pop's inspirational speech, and we're going to the falls. Three minutes drive later, and we've made it to the most popular attraction in Sioux Falls, Falls Park. Apparently you can go up to the top of this, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. Look at this viewpoint. Wow, it's beautiful. So I asked the question about how much of this is as it originally was, and the docent said it's pretty much the same, except for the outside and changing of the rocks to build this bridge, but this is the way it originally was, they claim. Check it out, you can even see the Ark of Dreams way out in the distance as well. Be sure to check the hours this is open as you don't want to miss this view when you're visiting the city. All right, now we're heading down to explore the Falls Park. Falls Park is one of the top attractions in the city and it makes up about 120 acres north of downtown. It's easy to see why as this is a beautiful area with multiple waterfalls, bridges you can cross, and rocks that you can climb on. Of course, there's also sculptures here if you want to see more art while you're exploring. We walked about a half mile around to the base of the falls, and while they're not that tall, they're very wide and actually very powerful as well. What a cool spot to have in the downtown area. You'll see more of this park when we come back for sunset, but next we headed over to the Cathedral of St. Joseph. We were told by a couple people in the city that this was a historic spot we really needed to visit. We always love seeing impressive cathedrals like this, so we figured we'd stop by, and we were blown away by how beautiful it was. The building process started in 1915, and it was completed in 1919. There's a massive pipe organ, multiple stained glass windows, and overall it's just a beautiful piece of architecture in the city. From there, we headed to downtown again to go to CH Patisserie. Ran by famed pastry chef Chris Hanmer, who was voted one of the top 10 pastry chefs in America and who won Bravo's Top Chef Just Desserts. This spot is a must visit for dessert fans in Sioux Falls. First off, I got a drink and I was shocked because it has this on top and she said they have a latte printer that uses coffee extract to print. That's pretty cool. My dad and I are by no means connoisseurs of macarons, but we loved everything that we got. And if you love them, you definitely should go here. We wanted to walk around the downtown a little bit more to get a feel for the area and we found ourselves outside of Zanbro's Variety and decided to walk in on a whim. This ended up being one of the best decisions we made while we were in Sioux Falls as the store itself is really cool but the antique area in the back is just something special by itself. This is an incredibly cool shop. The vintage area is so well curated and has so many unique things to look at. Definitely come see it. If I had a lot more money and a way to take everything home, I probably would have bought a quarter of the store. 
As we left the downtown area, we decided we had spent a lot of the day eating and should probably do something more active. You know, Pops and I can't say no to a good competition, so we figured we'd check out this great shots. It's gonna be a question of who is worse, but we're both terrible. <laughs> we're not golfers, but it's fun. Pops has also never done anything like this before, so this should be fun. You're gonna be in pain tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that one go? Where'd that one go? <laughs> this is pretty bad. Both of us are just getting zeros over and over again. It's hard to be too competitive. If you've never done anything like this before, you should definitely check it out. And if you go on a weekday in the morning or the early afternoon, you can usually get a pretty good price. We've realized that both of us are bad, but that Pops is worse. <laughs> wow, are we good? We relaxed for a little bit in the hotel, but we're out again for dinner and sunset. First stop, this Indian taco place that I've heard a lot of good things about. We love trying unique places when we travel, and this is a highly rated spot in Sioux Falls that we were told had authentic Lakota cuisine. All right, Pop's got bison fry bread, and we got fry bread fingers, which have cinnamon, sugar, and honey on them. And then I got the regular beef fry bread. It looks really great, and it's made to order here. I really like it. The fry bread is really nice. And uh, um, as he said, the flavor profile of the bison is just a little, or the buffalo is just a little bit different. It's very, very nice. I enjoy it. I'm no expert on fry bread, but I've had it a lot during our trips. And I have to say, this is probably my favorite one I've ever had. The fry bread here is incredible. And all the flavors and seasoning, very, very good. We're back in downtown to go to this cool arcade bar before sunset at Falls Park. As I said before, my dad and I never pass up a good opportunity to have a competition, and we've played video games basically my entire life. First game down, I beat Pops at Pong, the game he was growing up with. Next up, Pac-Man, another game that Pops should be good at. No, no, don't eat me! Oh, no. We spent about 45 minutes just walking around and playing all the different games, and this is a great spot as they have good drinks and all the games were relatively well priced. We didn't even get through our entire $25 card before we left and we actually gave it to somebody on the way out. After I beat Pops in all the video games, now we're heading to Sunset. Not even close. <laughs> the sun is just behind the trees, so we we're actually a little bit late, I think. But we got 45 minutes till sunset, so. We'll see if the colors change at all. I thought 45 minutes would give me enough time to get here before the waterfall was shadowed, but unfortunately that was not the case. That didn't really matter though, it was a beautiful time to be at the falls and there was hundreds of other people there with us. Plus, when you walked all the way up to the upper area, you could still get a little bit of that sunburst on the falls. I can't complain, that's pretty much the perfect way to end your day in Sioux Falls. We spent about 45 minutes just sitting here soaking it all in as we didn't want our South Dakota road trip to end. And with that, our time in South Dakota is done. Hopefully you enjoyed going on this adventure with us. I love South Dakota. What do you think, Pops? South Dakota is a hidden gem. I had no idea of the beauty and everything here. It's fabulous. We'll see you on the next road trip. <laughs>